Hi, it's Paul from Hobby Link International. Don't forget to subscribe buttons down there. Click on the bell as well to get notified of future videos from myself or Kenny. Today we're going to have a look at a new kit that's on our shop. Uh, this is from, from Clearprop. This is a 148th Sky Shark. Okay, so let's see what's inside the box. This is the XA2D-1 Skyshark, 148th scale, CP4802 by Clearprop. This is an advanced kit, so basically there's goodies inside, photo edge resin, that sort of stuff. Uh, looks like there's four decal options, and oh, handy, no, most of parts. 203 plastic parts, 83 photo etch parts, five resin parts, and you end up with an aircraft, what, 226 centimeters by 32 centimeters, um, which is what, about uh, 14 inches wide by 10 inches long in Imperial. So, um, and obviously this is for sale in our shop as well, the link's underneath. And it's, uh, it's actually selling quite well, to be honest. If I can get the lid off. So it's just a straight lid inside. They have a solid corrugated box. Let me open it up. Um, first thing is this is just a little extra I ordered for my kit. Basically there's some there's a few um, extras you can get for this kit. Uh, this is pitot tubes and guns in brass. So everything seems to be in, in bags. It's quite a, quite a heavy box actually as well. So put that there. Decal sheet, I think the photo etch is in there as well. And the instructions. So start off. Obviously there'll be um, close-up photographs of all of this on the website the link is underneath this video so instructions in a little uh, glossy paper full color um, booklet scans of all this will be on the website as well it's their usual um, layout which is uh, pretty good actually colors all called out uh, using ammo paints um, going through the instructions are pretty good in the middle there we've got the the painting guide which is sort of built in an integral part of the instructions uh, placement of decals and so on so that looks pretty neat We'll have a close look, look at these as we look at some of the parts. But you can see all the close-up of the instructions will be on the website. Um, oops. The, uh, let's look at the main parts list. Obviously the Sky Shark never made it into uh, full production. I think there's just uh, two prototypes and ten pre-production. It was plagued with engine problems. And it was actually designed for the end of the war for escort carrier use but by the time they'd solved all the engine problems escort carriers were being retired from service and it was basically an aircraft with uh, nowhere to go um, so there's a lot of really fine detail on the surface here i can i can see the the rivet lines um but i can't feel them under my thumb um, And I can only feel some of the larger lines, the panel lines with dragging a nail down it. I can't feel, barely feel anything with a dragging a fingernail off it. So it's quite not, it's quite a chunky aircraft by the looks of it. Um, some more parts there. Let's 
nice detailing of the half. Again, very nice. Clear parts and the resin parts are also in here as well. Oh. It's got resin parts are in their own separate bag so they don't damage the clear parts. So the resin parts, that's really thin resin there. Looks like seat. Not sure what that, those parts are yet. They're very nice, nicely put together. Clear parts, two options. It's basically, you get a split canopy or a complete canopy. So, it kind of saves you having to saw it in half if you want the canopy open. So, it looks like canopy open is an option. Um, yeah, that looks like air intake trunking or exhaust trunking. In there. Cockpit parts, it's like flat. Oh, that, there's, that's a flat uh, instrument panel. This one has detail on it. So it looks like you have an option of using a decal or photo etch for that. Uh, little small parts, like halo ones. Again, really really fine detail. I can see the service detail, but I can't feel it. Part of the wing, the inner part. Again, lots of really nice detail on there. One thing I meant to look at was... Yeah, there's no uh, mating pins on here. So you just have to be careful when you're putting the the halves together. And then the last one. Looks like the outer wings. Looks like there's some alignment pins on here. You can see those. Uh, wheels like with tread on them. That's more parts. The other half of the outer wings with alignment pins. And also these holes will be for underwing hard points. That had something like 22 underwing hard points. Um, basically it was Think Sky Raider um, and you're onto the roughly the same I idea, obviously a different engine and whatnot. But um, and there's the under wing, the main part of the uh, centre fuselage and inner wings. So lots of nice detail and alignment pins there. So it looks like you just have to be careful with alignment of the alignment pins. Is that one? I shall have to have a look and just see. So there should be. Oh, there is. There's teeny tiny alignment pins here. I was wrong earlier. Yeah, there's not many. Oh, there's a couple. One at the back there. So a few really tiny alignment pins. You have to be careful. You could easily just lose those with um, with the brush of a of a file. So looks very nice. A lot of plastic parts in there. Oh, I haven't, I haven't looked at this yet. There's your decal options. Like I said, you've got four decal options. Let's pull these out of here. So, decal sheet. Other decal sheet with stencils. And there's your... Oh, there's your uh, cockpit. There's a masking sheet behind there, so you get masks for the cockpit. And photo etch. So there you go. So we'll have a close up, just a close up look at some of the parts as I go through some of the steps in the instructions. But so far, looks pretty neat. 
So inside the box we have 203 plastic parts, 83 photo etch parts, 5 resin parts, a set of painting masks, 2 decal sheets and a full colour 24 page glossy paper instruction sheet. And there's 4 uh, decal options in the kit. Page 1 starts in the cockpit. You have an option of two ways to do the instrument panel, either with a decal or plastic film and a PE sheet on top. Then you build what looks like likely a very detailed pilot's seat and then the two side walls to go in the cockpit as well. Uh, quite a few small pieces of photo etch involved in this as well. Over the page we basically assemble the cockpit parts we've made to make a cockpit tub assembly and then go on to make the engine intakes and exhaust ducts um, which will fit inside the fuselage and they've given a representation of fan blades at both ends so if somebody does get a torch and look up one of the ducting they will see uh, what appears to be an engine up there. Over the page we put the ducting in the fuselage halves and join the fuselage halves um, with several pieces going between the two. Um, you get a side diagram to uh, make sure you get everything lined up properly. Um, this should go quite nicely. Uh, and also part N1 here you have to decide whether you're going to do the uh, canopy open or closed and make adjustments to part N1 accordingly. Okay, I've skipped forward a little bit to step 21 now uh, and we're adding the parts of the tail, the rudder, elevators and the centre part of the wing assembly goes together. Um, one option for this kit is you can build it with the wings folded or extended and also for um, paint scheme one of this kit there's uh, another part that goes on the exhaust that particular aircraft had slightly different exhaust than the others and then over the page and step 24 has you building the or starting with step 24 has you building the main undercarriage legs nice diagram there to make sure you get the wheels on the right way round you also um, surprisingly assemble the uh, undercarriage doors there's uh, extra parts go on there and then you fit the main undercarriage legs. Jumping ahead a little bit to step 35 um, we're assembling or adding the uh, air brake and tail wheel to the aircraft. There's also a diagram there to, so you get the angles right of things and then assemble the I should say the, the two three bladed propeller hubs now onto the final, uh, basically four steps of the build, of, but you'll only do two of them. So steps 44 and 45 if you're building the aircraft with the wings extended. The ailerons on the main wing fit differently depending whether you have the, uh, the wings folded or not. So look across onto step 46 and you'll see it uses parts K1 and K2 to attach the ailerons. And, and then you assemble the wings in the folded position. If in the previous step you used parts K3 and K4 to attach the ailerons to assemble them in a different position. Uh, but anyway, there you have the complete build. Um, everything's assembled and you should have a nice looking kit there with lots of nice detail. Okay, paints and decals. You get uh, f four painting schemes, two in navy blue, two in aluminium, although it's different shades of aluminium or there's polished steel and gunmetal in there as well. Um, two decal sheets, one with the larger insignia, one is full of stencils, there's lots of stencils to go on here. Um, just look, look pretty neat, everything you need to know is here. All the colours are called out in the ammo paint scheme. Um, if you want to use a conversion chart for that, go to the AMO website. They've got a pretty comprehensive conversion chart for their line of paints. Um, you should end up with a um, pretty colourful model, either way, the sky blue or the aluminium. So, an overall conclusion. Um, which obviously, it's easily the best one on the market because the only other options are, uh, I think it's three... Uh, boxings of a vacuform kit that originally dates back to the 50s. 
so there's not really any competition there. I'm saying that it's a modern kit, um, lots of nice detail, uh, plenty of photo etching here for, to keep uh, keep you happy. Um, you have the options of open and closed canopy, wings folded or not. Um, it should end up. It's a pretty unique aircraft, and hopefully it does well. It should appeal to people who are into, should we say? aircraft that never made it into production, um, but all in all, very nice kit indeed.